Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar. My name is Alan Lodge, and I am a contributor to the VOSE series and the author of uh, a teacher's guide to our story, which delves into uh, how to use this wonderful curriculum that all of us have been drawn to. Um, and it also talks about just general practices um, for teaching, for teaching with comprehensible input and um, for acquisition driven instruction. So uh, the theme of tonight's conference is, or tonight's webinar is making the move to story-based teaching. And it's really gonna touch on um, the overarching theme of this summer's uh, CI Summit in Savannah, Georgia, hosted by VOSES. And as you might know, the tagline for that is, learn to teach for proficiency through acquisition driven instruction or ADI. So I wanted to talk just very generally about what that is. Um, but before I jump in and do that, I always think it's nice to get a sense of who is here. So if you want to just drop into the chat, if you have your keyboard accessible, um, what you teach and maybe where you're from and any questions that you're hoping to get out of tonight's webinar. Um, so we'll just take a minute to let some things populate in the chat. And I'll, I'll remind you again, um, I'm looking for where you're from, um, what you teach, and any questions on your mind um, as you're coming into tonight's webinar. Oh, Maryland, Avis. I don't know if I'm saying your name correctly, but I'm from Maryland. Um, always repping the Maryland flag. It's a very cool flag. Uh, Colorado, Massachusetts, South Carolina, Illinois. Oh my gosh, we're from all over. German, French, French and Russian. Um, this is one of the things, although I'm very, very excited about the CI Summit in Savannah and the chance to have, um, you know, impersonal professional, in-person professional development, these Zoom conferences are so great because they just allow um, such easy access for all of us from so many places. Um, and any burning questions that people have too, um, or just things you're hoping are going to be addressed in tonight's webinar, go ahead and put them in there too. Patrick, I think that's Russian. That's cool. I don't know what it says. Okay, so um, teaching through acquisition driven instruction or ADI, um, it's really just a move away from explicit grammar based instruction. So the idea that let's say it's Spanish too, and you're gonna start off the year teaching the present tense. And then for these three weeks in October, you're gonna do the preterite and the imperfect, and it goes in this nice orderly sequence. And it's that way year after year after year. Um, what Voces is doing and what the CI Summit uh, this summer in Georgia is doing is trying to um, really break us out of that and offer us a different vision, a different way to deliver instruction to our students. Um, both methods work. I mean, most of us here were probably taught through the previous more traditional method. Um, but this acquisition driven instruction method is something that's come out of new research, a research that's led by Dr. Stephen Crashen, who amazingly is going to be one of the keynote uh, speakers at the conference. And he has several hypotheses that play into um, some of the ideas and activities and resources um, that'll be accessible to us at that conference and that we see in our VOSES curriculum. So um, I'm going to drop some links into the chat. These are things that um, you can kind of scan through. I'll screen share, but offer even more background on this topic. So the first thing that I'm going to drop into the chat is an article by um, one of the main organizers of the CI Summit, Terry. I actually don't know how to say her last name yet. I'm going to say White White Chart, White Cart. Um, someone can cor correct me and put the phonetic pronunciation in there if they know. Um, but here's the link, and I'm going to screen share this at the same time. So um, Stephen Krashen, she, you know, talks a little bit about CI, ADI, and then down here she mentions um, some of Stephen Krashen's hypotheses, one of them being 
um, the idea that language is a sub learning language is a or acquiring it as a subconscious process as opposed to learning it um, through flashcards and forced memorization, which would be more of a conscious process. So we want to um, really spark the subconscious process and maximize that in our instruction. And then the input hypothesis, CI, the idea that we want to give our students as much um, written input, spoken input as possible, make it understandable to them um, so that they can absorb this language and move toward the path of proficiency. Um, so how we can do that is definitely through stories. That's the title of this workshop, making the move through stories, but there are all sorts of other means um, which will be touched upon at the CI Summit this summer, um, which by the way, has a virtual track. I know I talked about it being in person, but there are both ways that you can participate in this awesome event. Um, and so um, I also wanna share, put in the chat, uh, this great visual that comes from Martina Beck's blog. So let me drop this in the chat as well. If I can, I think I've lost my chat somewhere. Let's see. Where'd it go? Oh man, it's gone. Let me, let me stop this. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so here's... Here's this blog post. And what I like about it is um, that she has this visual of instruction, what's happening in our classroom being the vehicle that's taking our students toward proficiency. Um, I talk to my students about this as, you know, being that they can um, understand some of the target language when they encounter it in the real world. Um, they can communicate with native speakers when they come across them in the real world and obviously in, in varying levels. Um, and then the gasoline for this instruction is CI. So we're putting into our car um, stories, movies, magazine articles, readers, all of these different things. Um, that give our students access to the language, to the rich spectrum of language. And it's our job to help make it comprehensible to them. So let me stop the share for a second so I can get my toolbar back. Um, and the CI Summit is really gonna address um, the logistics of how to make all of this happen. So if you are, um, still teaching with a pretty traditional method or a traditional book, or maybe you're using the VOSES curriculum and you're kind of straddling both wor worlds. I would say that's where um, I kind of find myself, even though I'm I'm enamored with ADI, I'm, I'm still teaching in a school and a department that hasn't fully made that tra um, transition. So I'm kind of in both places. But um, this summer's summit will talk about yeah, the logistics of that. Like if we're going to um, not teach with a very deliberate kind of boxed in sequence, and if it's going to be a little more open-ended, then how do we grade that? How do we explain that to our administrators, to our parents, to our students? Um, and I'm so excited this summer to, to present and also to just be linked with like-minded people um, that are experimenting with this and, and incorporating this in their classrooms and will share their ideas with us. So um, tonight, I want to talk about how VOSACE itself will be a piece of the puzzle of that conference. And the curriculum that we use, the Our Story curriculum, um, places where you can um, move into this more freeform, unstructured way of delivering language instruction. And I always think when I go to webinars, it's nice to um, have teachers or have presenters demo and have participants be um, actively involved. So I wanted to do um, some of that tonight. Um, are there any questions up to this point? Let's see in the chat. Nothing in the chat so far, but um, oh wait. Maybe there is stuff in the chat so far. Let me see. Okay. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about within VOSACE is just the fact that it's a curriculum built around stories. And when you're working with a story, as opposed to a traditional textbook that maybe has um, some individual sentences or a lot of charts or worksheets that your students need to fill out, when you have a story text, you have rich language. 
So you yourself could choose to delve into a certain grammar point or revisit a grammar point or give a little mini grammar instruction at any given point, at any part of the story. And anytime you're working with a story, you have characters that you can describe um, what they did, past tense, what they will do, um, if you were in the story, what you would do. So you have the possibility to visit a lot of different grammar um, just by the nature of having a story with characters that has you know, some sort of interesting plot line, a con rising action, a conflict, and then a resolution. Um, and the stories that are in our books, you know, they vary. Some of them are really silly. And I know for some teachers of language, they don't really like the stories that are wacky and they prefer ones that touch on true aspects of uh, the different cultures that are represented um, with the languages that we teach. Uh, but, you know, there's something for everyone in there. And what I really like about the Vosace curriculum is the way those stories are laid out. So I wanna jump into the book now. Um, I'll share my screen again. And just for the purposes of um, tonight's you know, little demonstration, uh, I'm gonna go into the level two book, the Spanish level two book, cause I'm a Spanish teacher. I normally teach uh, I normally teach Spanish three. Let me find my participants again. I normally teach Spanish three, but uh, I just replaced, I just came off maternity leave myself and replaced a teacher that was coincidentally going on paternity leave. So now I'm teaching with this, this set of stories that I wasn't as familiar with. And in all of the our story curriculum, whether you're teaching with German or Spanish, you've got this drop down menu of different units, um, some short stories. They start with important vocabulary. Uh, you'll notice if you're you know new to this that it's just like six terms as opposed to maybe in a traditional book, you might have 45 that could overwhelm students. So you're just focusing on um, some really specific terms to start you off. And then there's a category called personalized questions, which show you the terms again. And then there's this whole built out slideshow with all of these different questions that you could potentially ask your students. Um, and this is a place where I think Voces really nicely opens the door toward unstructured conversation. Um, I know when I first started uh, teaching in this way and considering using personalized questions, I was a little unsure what to do with all of this stuff. It was like, should I, should I ask every single question in here? Um, should I, uh, should I make sure every single student gets to respond? And my answer to that is no, at least my own system has been to, um, try and, create as much organic conversation as possible. So in advance, if I can, if I have time in advance, I'll visit, and if I'm using Voces, I'll visit the slideshow, I'll click through the slides, and based on my understanding of the students, my sense of who's in my classroom, what the big personalities are, what the more reserved personalities are, I'll be like, you know what, I think I think on this slide, I'm gonna focus on this question um, and I'm gonna see what kind of conversation takes off. And, you know, it's just like real life. Like sometimes you're at a, I don't know, a cocktail party and you land in a group of people and someone says something and the, you know, the next time you look at the clock, a half hour has gone by. Another time you're like, um, I'm gonna to go to the bathroom, you know? I mean, I think that's okay for that to happen um, within your language classroom. And one of the things that definitely we're gonna learn at the Summer CI Conference is just how to have the confidence to do that, to have um, something that might not fall into a set amount of time, to have something that could fall flat and to have a backup plan or to have some additional tools that can help revive that conversation again. Um, and so, so yeah, I would look through the slideshow and kind of think, you know, I think this question would be good. Um, I don't think my students are going to really 
take to that question or I might swap out a word here and there. And then again, I would just throw it out to the class without concern over every single person participating or, um, you know, hitting every single question that's on here, but really seeing this as like a, a starting point or a place where I could generate um, some organic conversation with my students. So I want to model that now. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'll stop my screen share. And uh, the, the question that was on that slide from the level two uh, Spanish book was, let me find my chat again. Um, so the vocab word they're focusing on is near in English, near. And the question that was in the Voces PowerPoint was, what do you need near you when you study? But since we're all language teachers, I would say when you lesson plan. So the, the question that I'm going to pose to you, mimicking how I might do preguntas personales, personalized questions, and just try and have this organically is, what do you need near you when you lesson plan? Um, and let's just see like what kind of mood we're in tonight. Um, if you don't mind, you know, being um, on your screen and participating, having your voice be shared, I would say um, turn your camera on now. Um, it would be great if we could get like, I don't know, six people. Yes, okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing at least three. If we could get a few more, that would be great because probably our classes have, I don't know, you can throw in the chat how many students you have in a class, um, but I'm guessing maybe like 20 students in a class. And so um, I'm gonna do this in, in English, maybe Spanglish, maybe commenting on, on where we might go, but let's see. Um, okay, so of course, before I present the vocabulary, I'm gonna be doing gestures. So near, I might, maybe this would be my gesture for near. And so um, my students are up on the screen. I see Daniel, am I saying that right? Or Math, Math Daniel? Or just Daniel? Yeah, that's correct. Math, Math Daniel. Daniel. Math Daniel, uh -huh. Avis, Genevieve, and how do I say yep. your name? Is it Sheetley? Isersa. Oh, Genevieve. Wow. Say it again for me. Genevieve. Genevieve. <laughs> and then my, mm -hmm. my last person that I see on my screen. Sheetley. Again, will you say it? Sheetley. 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 Okay. Um, so I'm just going to pose it out to you. What do you need near you? And you can answer me in English. What do you need near you when you lesson plan? A cup of tea. Oh, it was that you, Seatley, that said that? A cup of tea? No, it was a Avis that a cup of tea. So when Avis lesson plan. <laughs> she needs, when she, lesson plan, she needs near her a cup of tea. And I see Genevieve has near her my water. a glass of water. Okay. So Genevieve, is it always water or sometimes? Coffee. Tea. Coffee. 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 Mm -hmm. And Nathaniel, Ma Nathaniel, I see you have also some sort of cup near you. Yes, I um, need near me coffee. <laughs> coffee. Okay, Math Daniel needs near him coffee when he lesson plans. Very, very important question for you, Math Daniel. You need near you coffee. Do you need near you Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> Math Daniel, what are you drinking? Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? I need Folgers. He froze. He needs near him um, 
I don't know. It's suspenseful. Folgers. 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 <laughs> okay. So that's probably good. You're probably saving money. You'll see as I'm doing this, I talk a lot with my hands, saving money, especially if you've, um, you know, depending on where you are in the year, if you have this, um, like catalog of gestures, you know, you can be trying to use them for me because I'm back on, from maternity leave. This is like day four for me. So it's a little, it's a little strange, the dynamic I'm experiencing, but yeah, so we'll keep going. So I'll say, okay, Matt, Daniel needs near him Folgers. Genevieve, do you need near you Folgers as well? Mm, not Folgers. What, what do you need near? Mm, Pete's coffee. Pete's, Pete's coffee. We have Pete's Coffee in Massachusetts, but it's not near me. It's no. far from me. Yeah. It's in Cambridge, I think, the closest. Pete's I make it at home. Oh, okay. Okay. I buy the beans and make it. You buy the beans and make it. Okay. Let me see. Um, do any of you need near you um, food? Your AirPods? Mm. No. So when you all are lesson planning, you're not. I have them with me all the music. time. <laughs> oh, Genevieve has them all the time. They're near you all the time. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she, she, Seatly. Did I say that right again? Seatly? Seatly. Not AirPods, but just regular music. Music. What yes. are you listening to these days? Or Latin music. It's depend, but I like to listen to uh, Latin music. I know us too. In our Spanish class, we've been doing a lot of the mania musical listening. Do you have a song at this moment that you're really into? No, really. Just it's a just mix. I, I ask the done. students and they give me the music and I play and sometimes I replay here, but no any any specific. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, you can kind of see the conversation could go in a lot of different directions and um, you might like, I have, I'm, I'm brand new, right? Back replacing this um, teacher who went out on paternity leave. And my last period of class I found is really flat. So I was doing personalized questions today and just getting, you know, no, I don't know. Like a lot last of that. period and, and is tough. Say that again, Genevieve. Last period is tough. Last period is tough. Um, and so, you know, part of, I think, what's going to be great about the CI Summit is just hearing that normalized, like hearing that when you're trying these unstructured things, like sometimes it's... <laughs> It's not uh, always the grand success that um, maybe you see modeled for you at um, different workshops or on teacher blogs that are online, um, but that there are tools that can help us, um, you know, get more out of it. Um, and I'll do one more. Um, one of the other, let me share again, one of the other questions. So, you know, I could talk about that grammar point as much as I wanted based on like what the vibe, the energy I'm getting from my students. Um, also in the slideshow was the phrase sabe que knows that. And there's like, there's a several sets of questions with sabe que. Um, and the last question I really liked. Um, the last question is what do you want to know about your teacher? So I'll put that in the chat. Um, what do you want to know about your teacher? And I'll let you guys um, jump in, both you know, the people that are on the screen. You can ask anything you want to know about me. And um, if you're not interested in being on video, you can throw it in the chat too. Is it a boy or a girl? Oh, my baby, my baby. Um, you want to know, you want to know if I have a boy or a girl? I have a girl, a little girl. I have a little girl named Autumn. Yeah. Nice. Um, Maria asked me, Maria wants to know if this is my first baby. Um, it is my first baby. Yes. Wow. Hard um, to be away. 
It is, it is hard to be away. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a challenge um, mm -hmm. of, I love my job, I love my students, but it is a challenge mm -hmm. to be away. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to take a question from Karina in the chat, which is, I have a large class of 30 plus students. Wow, Karina, that's, that is large. It's always the same five students participating. How can I get more students to answer my spontaneous questions? Um, so I think there's like a lot of possible answers to that question. Um, for me, when, like for my for this last period class where I was, it's a small class, but I was still struggling with participation. Um, there are a couple tricks that I have up my sleeve. These are things that I've put in my book, um, A Teacher's Guide to Our Story. I'm gonna throw the link to that in the chat right now. Um, so I talk about just a lot of um, different strategies for personalized questions, activities, um, getting to know your students. But for participation, here's the link to um, my book. Um, one of the things I like to do is something called a whip around. It's a pretty low stakes uh, type of participation. So um, it's really just asking, like whipping around the room, or maybe since you have 30 students, second row or first row um, or this side of the room, however you wanna kind of divvy it up, but asking them for like a one word response um, or even a one word gesture, like see, no, um, rating something, cinco, one to five, um, but to jump back to like the, the hey, coffee. Hey. Do you need coffee when you're at lesson planning um, or coffee or tea? And then you would just go around cafe or Te, cafe or te. And you're just like, it's it's such a minimum um, ask of them. And every single person's charged with chiming in with the same thing, that that could be a way doing a whip around like a, you know, a quick, um, either like bodily response or verbal response with, you know, preloaded options for them can be a way to warm up the students. Um, and I do think over time through personalized questions, but at least for me through, it's really been through the special person interviews um, that Bryce Hedstrom has popularized that so many teachers have their own, you know, version of. Um, but for me, that's where like, the magic of classroom con connection and banter has come alive. Um, also, um, Maria, to your question, um, in this same class, uh, I have two sections. So this section is really flat and the other one's very talkative. So I have my plan and I'm realizing, man, I have these like extra 15 minutes with this section that's not participating very much. Um, and there are some other getting to know you activities that we'll go over at the CI Summit that are also in my book. But one of them is um, something I love to do on a Monday or a Friday, just give them a piece of paper and tell them to draw um, an interest. So if it's a Monday, draw an interesting moment from your weekend. You could be walking around the room as they're drawing, commenting. Um, you could be like, you know, showing that you're acknowledging all the papers. You obviously won't be able to do all 30. Um, but then you could take, if you have a document class, uh, document camera in your classroom, you could take, you know, three of the pictures and show, put the pictures up there. Um, that was something that I did today. I did it on Monday, but I didn't have time to get to it until today. So I had that extra time and I was like, let's look at, remember the weekend pictures from Monday? And, um, you know, a student had kind of mentioned that he worked at this fast food restaurant. And then we got some banter going just around that. And, um, you know, when you find out these little personalized nuggets, then they can be touch points um, at different times in the class. When you're bringing in grammar, you can weave in these like personalized tidbits. Um, and that can be a way when the students, I think, feel like there's a little, oh, someone knows a little something about me. Hopefully that they, they begin to warm up. Thank um, you. Yeah, that was such a great question. If there are other... Um, if there are other questions out there, you know, please throw them in the chat because I think we're all faced with the same challenges at, you know, at different points. So Avis, what do you do when they are wanting to talk and excited to talk about your topic and question, but in English? 
That's an awesome question. So um, I think there are all sorts of uh, answers for that, but my own is that um, I kind of, when I introduce myself to the students in the beginning of the year, I say to them that primarily we're going to be talking in the target language, but there will be times when I choose to talk to them in English. And if I'm doing that, it's because um, I'm not interested necessarily in um, getting to them to practice or acquire the language in that moment. It might be I want to really make sure they understand the instructions or um, I you know, want them to communicate whatever they need to communicate for the sake of um, classroom connection or bonding, but that those English times will be to a minimum. So like ideally 90% in the target language, 10%, these are the ACTFL guidelines. Um, in, in English. And then I say to them, when I am speaking in Spanish, you're speaking in Spanish. And if I'm speaking in English or the document that you receive is in English, then English is okay. Um, I know other teachers who have signs like a magnet back and forth where they might put like English, Spanish, um, but you know, have some way for me, it's, it's that like if I'm leading the way in English, English is okay. If I'm leading the way in Spanish, stay in Spanish. Um, that I help my students designate that. And I, I guess I try and encourage, like sometimes when I ask questions and I anticipate there, I know that they're not going to be able to, like, I don't know if I got a picture in a Spanish one class from something they did over the weekend and it shows the student rock climbing. And I don't know if it shows something where I kind of know that the vocab just isn't there for this. I might say like, wow, you know, in the target language, wow, you went rock climbing. Um, this looks exciting. And then what happened? And then I might say like, you know, like, ¿Qué pasó? Parece muy interesante. Puedes decirnos en inglés. En inglés, en English, can you tell us what happened here? So you could make that judgment call if you know that the student like really wants to share the story and um, it's, it's kind of to the benefit of the classroom bonding or your connection to that student to allow them to just um, get their excitement out. And you can worry about like what you're trying to do with the language acquisition um, in the rest of the class. So yeah, I'm one, I initially, there were times in my teaching where I was like, no English. I, you know, it will not happen inside my classroom, but I've shifted away from that and um, maybe I'll shift back to it. But I think um, you just kind of have to feel like what, I guess, what works toward your overarching goals um, in your classroom. Um, Marjan, I hope I'm saying that right, said, where can we find interesting stories for each level? Um, so I'm not sure if you're, if you're using the Voces curriculum, the whole book is, is written based off stories. So the curriculum are these short stories about three stories and a longer story that are built off of key vocab words, personalized questions with all sorts of, you know, cultural tidbits interwoven in between. But I will say that even though I'm obviously a huge proponent of the Voces curriculum, it's not what I use exclusively. And in fact, it's, it's a small part of what I use. I love to use, um, music videos, my own stories that I write, um, Netflix shows, books, uh, newspaper articles. I'm really pulling from a lot of different places um, as I've moved toward this acquisition-driven style of instruction um, with CI being the fuel. So um, where you can get those stories, you can, um, you can go to a lot of different places. I mean, you can look at different readers, Voces has a whole set. I think it's called like Voces. Um, I don't know if Simone is on here. Simone is the, the Voces rep tonight, but um, it might be called Voces Unplugged. Yeah, there she goes. She put it in the chat. Voces Unplugged, where you can get paper readers. Um, and so um, Marjan put she's using Vista High. So um, I would definitely suggest, um, and let me, let me share my screen again. Um, and go back to the Voces book, the level two book. Um, so here I am in the first unit. 
you're going to get this little smattering of vocab, the personalized questions that, again, you don't have to do it. But I feel like it's an invitation to kind of talk more freely and organically with your students. Um, a story script, that's a, a CI strategy that some teachers um, really like to use. And then you get into like the first story. And this is, um, Marjan, the way the whole book is set up. All different stories with the audio, with yellow teacher notes that give you some ideas for what you could do, um, activities that go along with it. Um, I would say probably the hardest part for me, as I mentioned, I'm a teacher that's straddling like both universes, coming from an old traditional textbook um, and moving toward this like more holistic uh, approach toward language learning, the assessing when you're in between those two worlds is the part that I think is most challenging, but there are assessment options um, in here as well, evaluations at the end. But if you're coming from a grammar-based approach, it'll be, it'll be a change. Um, and the CI Summit this summer is like meant to really um, boost you, empower you that you can do this. Um, and also, I think change change happens in in like in small little steps. You know, sometimes we picture the end game and we picture what we want, the transformation that we want at the end. But even if you just take one piece or one tool and you start to weave that into what you're doing over time, um, the transformation that you are looking for, I think, will take root. Um, a question about do these um, stories exist in French too? Yes, the Vosses curriculum is, um, is structured the same way in French, Spanish, German, and Italian. Um, and Simone, you can put in the chat <laughs> if there are more languages um, in the wings. I know ESL, um, I know there's been talk potentially of doing something with the classics, um, but yeah, you can contact Voces Digital. Um, you can go right on their webpage and they're great about offering you a walkthrough so you can talk to a real person that'll screen share like this and um, just let you see some of the features and um, how the book can be used. Um, so from here, I was kind of thinking, well, in my own, um, in my own book, A Teacher's Guide to Our Story, um, there are a lot of different places I go. I think the chapter that's most beneficial to teachers out there, um, is the chapter on activities, like just real practical, like tell me something I can do in my classroom. I've got a 50 minute period. We just found out we're gonna to move to a block schedule with 75 minute periods. And in my department meeting yesterday, we were all like, how, you know, wow, how are we gonna um, adjust to this new time frame?" So actually like having a catalog of activities that you can choose from, I think is really beneficial. And that's something that I've tried to put um, forward into the book. And I'm gonna share um, one more, blog article with you. Um, it's from Martina Beck's blog. And um, this one's called like the four steps to shift to acquisition driven instruction. Um, let me put this back to everyone. And I'm going to screen share this as well. So here's the graphic that Martina Bex has. She says, when you're teaching with ADI, start with the input. So this was Maria, I think Maria or Marjan's question. Stories, conversa free flowing conversation, readers, movies, like anything that's going to give your students authentic, um, you know, authentic rich input um, will be the way you start. Step two, help them understand it through gestures, through repetition. For me, you can see I talk fast when I'm really excited, so slowing down. Um, I've just started filming myself. Um, I just have the camera on me in the classroom, and um, <laughs> it's kind of nerve wracking to, you know, you see all the things that you say that you wouldn't realize otherwise, but I need to slow down um, when I'm teaching my students. 
visual aids on the board, and then play with the input. Number three, play. So that's what's in my um, teacher's guide is all these ways that you can recycle activities, all these fun ways. It can look like fun and games. Part of the CI Summit is talking about how, um, you know, when we're explaining this paradigm shift to our teachers and our students and our parents, you know, it's important that they understand that the rigor of this type of classroom is a little bit different. Instead of it being 60 vocab terms that you're drilled with flashcards, it may be that um, you're tasked with maintaining or concentration, or it may be that you're tasked with um, communicating when you don't understand something, or I don't know, it, it's just kind of shifting the sense of um, what the student responsibility is in terms of their part in that pathway toward proficiency. Um, and then the last piece is, I love this, celebrate success, which when you read more into the blog posts, it's really assessing them. So I think that's a kind of a funny euphemism for um, testing, celebrating, but um, you want them to like see the progress that they're that they're making and there are different ways that you can measure student progress but like i said before i think this is the really tricky part if you're transitioning from a different model um because you know when you're testing it's it's kind of like it's easy to grade something where it's like fill in the blank and you wrote in the ver wrong verb form and no one's going to challenge if you got a 14 out of 18 because it's so cut and dry. Um, it's harder, I think, to justify assessments that are more open-ended, that allow for mistakes, that acknowledge that mistake making is absolutely a natural part of the acquisition process. Um, so those are all things, at least for me, those are the things that um, have been like the biggest challenge for me. And that's what I'm excited about um, learning from other teachers and presenters this summer um, at the CI conference. Um, so, so yeah, I think the, the most beneficial contribution that I can offer through my book and through my presentation at um, the Summer CI Conference is really about those activities that are ready-made that allow you to do step three in that blog article that I just posted, um, which is to play with language in different ways. Um, and um, some other things I thought we could talk about tonight would either be um, assessments or uh, how to get the students so that it's not just you teaching out to the group, but the students interacting with one another at different levels. Um, I'm not sure if people have a preference for either talking about assessment or those types of interpersonal interactions, um, or maybe something else that you'd wanna use with the remainder of our time. You can throw it in the chat or just ask. Inter so yeah, people talking about interpersonal. Okay. Um, and some talking about assessment. I think I'll, since the first couple were on interpersonal, I'll touch on this. So um, in my book, A Teacher's Guide, um, actually in my chapter on classroom management, I talk about this acronym that I came across at a conference, very much like the CI. Um, summit, but it was Massachusetts based where I am. And the acronym was called TALK. And it was part of a workshop called Interpersonal Boot Camp um, that was run by a teacher named Rebecca Blowwolf, who's since received national recognition as a teacher of the year in foreign language. Um, and the TALK acronym stands for Target Language. So, you know, trying to stay in the 90%. Um, the A stood for accuracy, but I personally have changed that to attempt. I'm going to put this in the chat now. Listening and kindness. Um, and so what this teacher did was she gave students um, either a task or some open-ended questions. So you could read, depending on your level, you could revisit the personalized questions and do something like this with your students. Um, she put them in small groups with the task or like with the personalized questions that she had pre-vetted um, on the table. And then what I love about this 
this is um, I give my students five pennies. So I had, you know, we maybe some of us have those like coin jars in our house or a penny jar. I had a bunch of pennies um, and each student got five pennies. And the pennies are there to help the students and you see who's participating in conversation. Um, so I have them put the pennies at the top of their desk and anytime they make a statement or anytime they offer something kind of substantive to the conversation, they drag the penny like back down toward them. And the goal is to have, you know, everybody have most of the pennies toward them by the end of, I don't know, the set time limit that you've decided upon. I teach mostly level three. Um, I've found putting a timer on the board and saying, we're gonna stay in Spanish for five minutes and circle, you know, like really wandering the classroom and listening to them. And then at, at the, the, timer go, the timer goes off and then I debrief and I say like, wow, I really wanna commend, and this is in English, the debrief. I really wanna commend John for the way that he, he got around describing this word. Um, and, you know, I think this acronym, it just gets at the elements of having a conversation. It could really be something if you took away like the target language that you could apply to that cocktail party concept. Like, are you listening? Are you really like reacting authentically because you were listening to what someone said? Are you kind? Are you inviting someone that's maybe a little shy or reticent about participating? Are you inviting them into the conversation? Um, and so there were different ways that this teacher, Rebecca Blowwolf, um, and she's a, she's an eighth grade Spanish teacher, I believe, so, or maybe German. She's an eighth grade teacher. So like a, basically a Spanish one teacher who was still achieving um, this type of like interpersonal, oh, French, Arlie, she's a French teacher. Um, she was achieving this type of interpersonal communication, even at the beginning levels. Um, and I think the key is just, it's like the name of the game here. It's, it's that it needs to be open-ended. If you give your students like some yes or no questions, do you like math? Yes, like that the conversation is going to die and it's going to be hard. So you maybe need to give them a graph, like maybe you give them the weather and you have them, I don't know, talk about the weather in different places. Like she's really the expert um, at that. But um, for, for me, since I'm a higher level, a three and a four teacher, they, they kind of have that language where they can go off on tangents a little bit. And I encourage them to go off on tangents or I write questions that are a little bit spicy and I know that are going to get um, some some talking from them. But that's basically the general rubric that I use with these pennies to help let people see visually who's contributing. And then those are also my classroom rules. So I first came across this in an interpersonal boot camp. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, those are those are my classroom rules. That's what I want. I want them talking in the target language. I want them grappling, attempting, even when they feel like it's too hard. I just want to speak in English using their hands, circumlocution. I want them to listen one person talking at a time. And I want them to be kind. This is my first, you know, week back at school. And I have those rules printed on a poster in my board on my board. Um, and I, I've pointed to the L for listening because there's always side conversations and I just wait. And then, oh, shh, bro, bro, you know, listen. Um, or like um, recently there was a student um, who started making little, I'm trying to think why this came up, but he was talking about another student's red hair and making like a lot of jokes about the student's red hair. Um, and I wasn't sure. I'm brand new to the class. So I'm like, is this an ongoing joke? Are these two students friends? What's going on? But I just pointed to the K kindness to just kind of say like, mm, it's a little too sarcastic for me. So, um, you know, that's just another benefit, I think, of attending um, something like the CI Summit that's going to have, let me put my, my, I have a CI Summit slide for you. I'm going to share it. Um, but I think a benefit to attending an event like this is that um, you could, where is it? I think this is it. Yeah. And there's a QR code there um, for registering too. But you could stumble across somebody's little activity and it could become something more for you. Like Rebecca's activity um, became for me. It became my classroom rules and it revolutionized 
my classroom management. Um, it was the thing that for me, it, it just, it felt like me. Um, it felt like something I could take and run with. And then it's as just my overarching philosophy as to what makes, um, you know, a language classroom run effectively, especially one that's unstructured and kind of has, it kind of has like some free form moments. Um, it has the possibility of someone making a joke that is off color or that doesn't land right. And you can um, remind them of like what your standards are. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's just the awesome part about attending any kind of PD is you never know what exactly you're going to leave with. Um, so let's see, Karina said, how do we register for the online version of the summit? It's not on the website. Um, Simone, are you able to address that question either in the chat or, or um, coming onto video? Um, yes, it should be on the website. Um, give me just a second to look. Okay. Um, while someone's I'm, looking, I'll just say, um, you know, the Voces team is just so responsive. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that um, has made me feel um, so grateful about this community is just the people behind the curriculum and who are helping um, push out this great content to us are responsive and, um, you know, can answer your, so you could just send an email to help at Voces um, or to Simone or to Aaron, and they will get back to you with that answer. Um, there's a Facebook page that's pretty active um, with like little teasers about what's coming up, um, restaurants that you might want to try or, um, the coffee houses, speaking of coffee, um, for my, my students who participated earlier, there's supposed to be some pretty good coffee shops in Savannah. Um, anything else that, um, people want to either know about the summit or, um, my work, a teacher's guide to our story, um, or just acquisition driven instruction. Um, please feel free to ask now as we begin to wrap up tonight's session. And I'm gonna throw um, a couple more resources into the chat. Um, these are the ones that I introduced earlier, but you know, at different points. So here are all the resources that I pointed to um, all together. I see. Oh, and Catherine, a word or two on assessment. Um, Catherine, can you like say more about, are you talking about like if you're straddling um, in between traditional and moving towards story-based or um, or do you want to know? Um, yeah, straddling from Catherine and Rosalba. Um, I just put the the book link um, in those hyperlinks above. It's the last one is um, my book resource. Um, so in terms of straddling, this is something I talk about in my book as well. There's two chapters on assessment. The first chapter is basically just how VOSACE approaches assessment, all the different ways and types of assessments that, that are put in there into the book. Um, the second chapter is on like my own spin. Um, all of us will have our own spin. So where I've kind of landed on this is um, the big summative assessment for me, VOSACE does have rubrics, rubrics Avis. Um, and so the summative assessments are rubric based. Um, so I'm grading holistically. I'm not saying like you missed five verb forms minus two. I'm not doing that. Um, I'm grading holistically. I have my own rubrics that I was working on and that my team uses. Um, so I don't necessarily rely on the ones that are in the book, but they exist. They're there if you want to use them. Um, and so that's what the big picture looks like at the end. Um, however, I'm teaching in this um, school that's still pretty traditional with students and parents that, um, you know, can really ask 
very pointed questions about grades. Um, and so I sometimes give little mini assessments, like really low stakes assessments um, that might touch briefly on the grammar or that may um, ask for some rote memorization of vocabulary. And that balance has kind of worked for me in my particular school, in my particular department. So it's, you know, for the students that are, that really like just, like I wanna jump through that hoop, um, you can tell them, we're gonna do an assessment on, on all the vocab and um, how I go about that actually, I guess, um, does play more into the way Voces is designed. So I might have them recognize the vocab words. I love to have them draw vocab words, like here, pick six out of the eight and draw them. Then I like to have them read my descriptions and match. And then lastly, I like to have them describe the vocab words in their own Spanish. And in the beginning of the year, I say, I'm not going to penalize you at all make all the grammar mistakes you want. I just, you just need to communicate to me that you know what this word means. And then in the beginning of the year, I'm kind of like, oh, you know, the next day, you guys did great going over these vocab words um, or describing these vocab words to me on the quiz. I want to point out some common errors that I noticed. I put them on the board. So it's not singling anybody out. Um, it's not penalizing them for making mistakes. It's just like, wow, this is what I noticed that came up. They don't need to memorize it. It's just like, it's kind of part of this teach to June philosophy of ADI, this idea that over and over and over again, your students are going to be exposed to language that they need that's coming out of um, their own efforts and your conversations with them. And by June, you may actually find that they've acquired a lot of the preterite and the imperfect. I mean, this is sadly, I, I'm no longer in this classroom, but all around this was, can you see it up on the wall? I have all the, um, <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job showing this, but I have, you know, like the top um, 15 high frequency verbs. I bought that through, if you want that yourself, I bought it through um, Sarah Breckley's teachers pay teachers site. She just has like a PDF and I got them printed up at Kinko's. Um, but, but yeah. Oh, um, and I'm getting a reminder um, to mention the early bird discount. This will be since we're coming up at time, but um, just regarding the CI summit, there's an early bird discount through May 1st, which is coming up. It's only a few days away. Um, and I think it saves you a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks um, on the on the cost of attending. Um, but yes, just to, to finalize that thing about assessment is, um, you know, my low stakes assessments, very, very low stakes, maybe like 10 points, a little bit more than a homework, um, would have like a traditional essence to them. Um, they would occur kind of in the warm up to the unit. And then over time, we're building to something that's really asking them to demonstrate um, their proficiency and isn't penalizing those small mistakes. So that's that's kind of what the straddling has looked like for me. Or even, you know, giving them a mnemonic device and having them spit out the mnemonic and great, you know, you, you memorize that. So low, low stakes um, could be a way that you bridge um, what you have been doing or what your colleagues are doing to um, where you eventually want to go, which is acquisition driven, not charts, but students being able to communicate with native speakers um, to varying degrees, being able to read a newspaper article and tell you more or less um, to varying degrees what's taking place in it. So um, thank you so much for popping online tonight. Um, it's that crazy time of year. It's April. There's a lot of burnout. Um, I know among teachers <laughs> um, at this time, it's like we're close, but we're not quite there. Um, so I just love this community and I'm so excited to potentially meet some of you in person this summer um, in Savannah. And um, you can always reach out to me. This is my um, this is my work email right now. Um, if you have follow-up questions after this. Um, and Simone, uh, is there anything you wanna say before we officially wrap? Uh, nope. For anybody that's interested in registering for that virtual option, um, please just send an email to info at um, and they'll help get you registered. 
going to put that in here. Too. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you. And thanks so much, everybody, for joining.